Welcome to ITTV for Form 2 Science, where we continue our journey through the world of our senses. Today's lesson, Geotropism, Hydrotropism and Thigmotropism. We've already started our investigation into plant responses. We realize from lessons previously that plants actually do respond to stimuli, although the response is very slow and not so obvious. The response of plants to a stimulus is called tropism. And we mentioned that there were three key tropisms, which were phototropism for light stimulus, geotropism for gravity, and hydrotropism for water stimulus. Tropism is a form of growth or movement of a part of a plant. So, example, if your roots grow downwards, we say that this is geotropism because the root is moving towards gravity. If your shoot moves towards light, we say phototropism because it is moving towards the light. When the part of a plant grows towards the stimulus, the response is known as positive tropism. So when the shoot of a plant grows towards the sunlight, we say that is positive phototropism. When the root of a plant grows downwards towards water, we say that is positive hydrotropism. So when you grow towards the stimulus, it is a positive tropism. When the part of a plant grows away from the stimulus, the response is known as negative tropism. Now let's have a look at the shoot again. The shoot is growing away from the water which is in the soil. We say the shoot is exhibiting negative hydrotropism. On the other hand, the root is growing downwards away from the sunlight. We can say the root is showing negative phototropism. So any growth away from a stimulus is known as a negative tropism. A plant's growth response to gravity is known as geotropism. So this is the first thing we want to really look at in this lesson. Geotropism, which is the growth of the root towards the stimulus of gravity. Roots grow towards the pull of gravity. They show positive geotropism. So the root grows downwards, moving towards the gravity, which is pulling us into the center of the Earth. Let's just do a quick diagram on the board to have a look at this in a bit more detail. So if I have my soil up here, and we have a tree, let's say, in here, and the tree has its root system down below it, like so, and above here we have our branches. We'll just draw a couple of these, like so. Gravity is down here. Gravity is downwards. Now, the only thing that is going towards the gravity are the roots. The roots here move towards the gravity like so. Therefore, the roots are exhibiting what we call positive geotropism. So the roots growing towards gravity, positive geotropism. Up here, the leaves, the shoots are growing away. Gravity is this way, they are growing in this direction. Now, a growth that is in the opposite direction is a negative tropism. So here, the shoot is exhibiting 
negative geotropism. So remember, towards gravity, positive geotropism, away, negative geotropism. Shoots grow away from the pull of gravity. They show negative geotropism. Geotropism helps a plant to get extra support. How this happens is, once again, clearly shown here. As these roots grow downwards into the ground, they anchor the plant into the ground. By anchoring the plant into the ground, this plant gets more stable up here. So by growing downwards, the roots are giving the plant an extra amount of support. Roots grow into the soil and anchor the plant in place. And by anchoring the plant, the plant gets this extra amount of support. Geotropism also helps the plant find water and minerals because most of the time the water and the minerals are inside the soil. Now that we've had a look at geotropism, let's try a few questions on geotropisms and see and test our knowledge. What is tropism? Now this is just a revision. We went over this in the last lesson, also at the beginning of today's lesson. What is a tropism? It is a something of a plant to a stimulus. Have you put down your answer? Let's compare our answers. The response of a plant to a stimulus. So tropism is the response of a plant to a stimulus. Let's try another question. What is geotropism? So now geotropism is going to be the response of a plant, but to what stimuli? If you put your answer down, let's have a look response of a plant to gravity. So the stimulus in this case is gravity. Let's try one more question. Which part of a plant shows positive geotropism? Which is to say, which part of the plant grows towards gravity? Have you written down your response? Good, let's compare our answers. The roots. Roots show positive geotropism. One last question. Which part of a plant shows negative geotropism? Now remember it's negative, which means it must be growing away from gravity. Which plant? Which part of the plant? Have you got it? Let's check the answer. The shoots. So the shoots grow away from gravity, therefore they're showing us negative geotropism. Now that we've completed those questions, let's move on to the next major tropism, which is going to be hydrotropism. A plant's growth response to water is known as hydrotropism. So whenever a plant grows towards water, it will be showing us a positive hydrotropism and if it grows away from water, it will be showing us a negative hydrotropism. The response of a plant's roots to the stimulus of water is stronger compared to its response to gravity. Now this is probably the most important part of this uh, subtopic because you see the roots are tricky. They grow towards gravity and they grow towards water, meaning they show us both positive geo and positive hydrotropism. But the question arises, which of the tropisms is got a bigger response or has a more important response mechanism in the plant? Well, the answer is hydrotropism. The plant needs water more than it needs to be anchored into the ground. There is no point if a plant is anchored into the ground and very stable, but there is no water in the soil. The root's main function is to get water for the plant, because the plant needs the water to survive. 
experiment compare the effect of geotropism and hydrotropism on a plant. What we're going to look at now is a very famous experiment that deals with the, gro uh, the growth of roots with respect to geo and hydrotropism. I'll quickly just sketch what we do in this experiment over here. So what we have here is we have a beaker like so. In the beaker, we put <clears throat> a few seedlings. So let's say I have a seedling over here like so. And obviously the seedling is going to have the leaves at the top and the roots growing downwards. And the roots growing downwards. Right. Now what we do is, we make sure that the inside of the beaker has no water. We lock it off at the top here, like this, by putting a, a gauze or something. And then what I do is, over here, and then over here, what we do is, we put some cotton, wool, soaked in water. Basically, what we're trying to do here is put the water above the root. So the water is up here now, gravity is down here. Which way is the root going to grow? What we notice is this, after some time, the root bends upwards. The roots bend upwards which means that the roots are now turning and going back up this root is turning and going back up they are not going downwards towards gravity now this obviously means that the hydrotropism is more important than the geotropism because the roots have bent and are going against gravity observation the roots show positive hydrotropism and negative geotropism. That's because they're growing away from gravity but moving towards the water. The conclusion is hydrotropism is more important than geotropism to a plant. Hydrotropism is very important. Plants need water and minerals. The plants need this water and minerals for survival. Water is essential for photosynthesis. Because we need water for photosynthesis, the plant needs photosynthesis to make food and to survive. This means water is the most important thing that the roots have to find. More important than anchoring and giving the plant stability. So remember, hydrotropism is more important than geotropism. Now that we've had a look at some hydrotropism uh, theory, let's try some hydrotropism questions. What is the plant's response to water called? What is the plant's response to water called? Have you written down your answer? Let's compare our answers. Hydrotropism. So the plant's response to water is called hydrotropism. Let's try another quick question. Which is more important, hydrotropism or geotropism? Remember the experiment we did or demonstrated on the board? Which one did the root go towards? Gravity or did it go towards water? Remember the experiment we demonstrated on the board? Which way did the roots grow? Did they grow towards gravity or did they grow towards the water? Let's have a check on the answers. Hydrotropism. Plants need water for photosynthesis. Now that we've had a look at geotropism and hydrotropism, let's move on to the next type of tropism which is called thigmotropism. Thigmotropism is a response in which the stimulus is touch or contact. So when we talk about touch or contact, basically we're talking about walls, planks, pieces of wood, pieces of iron that the plant is going to touch. Roots grow away from solid objects such as stones, but stems 
tend to grow towards objects which they come into contact with. So if we were talking about the positives and negatives here, you would say that roots show negative thigmotropism because they grow away from contact, whereas the stem shows positive thigmotropism because it grows towards a possible contact. The passion flower, cucumber and long bean are plants with soft stems. Now the reason that we mention plants with soft stems is because they tend to show thigmotropism responses more than other plants because they need the thigmotropism to help them grow upwards. These plants have tendrils which respond to touch. So when touch occurs, these tendrils wind around or contact or attach themselves to the object and thereby help the plant sort of climb up the touch surface. Tendrils curl around an object that touches them. Nastic movement. Nastic movement is the response of a part of a plant towards touch, light or heat. Now, a nastic movement is a movement of a part of a plant that is fast. It's not slow. We can clearly see this change or movement occurring. Example is your morning glory or your sunflower, which opens when the sun arises and closes when the sun disappears. These are what we call nastic movements. It's not the whole plant. There is no positive or negative to it. It's just a particular area responding to an immediate stimuli. Touch, light or heat. This movement is fast and reversible. Like I said, we can see it happening and it opens and closes or it moves away and moves back. So it is reversible. The opening and closing movements of the mimosa leaflets are example of nastic movement. Now the mimosa pudina is a thorny plant that we have in our playing fields. When you touch it, it closes. When you leave it for a while, it opens back up. Now it closes because it is trying to avoid being damaged. Also, it is also trying to defend itself because when it closes, the thorns stick out. I hope from this chapter you understand the, what we need to know about the tropisms. Geotropism, hydrotropism, thigmotropism, and also the nastic movement, which is the opening and closing of flowers or leaves. That's all the time we have for today's lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.